It's that time of the year, October in London. It's the week when the art crowd is flocking to the Regent's Park. Hello, art enthusiasts. I'm Jane Greaves. Welcome to Freeze London and Freeze Masters 2023. Whether you're into contemporary art or historical art, these fairs have something for everyone. And it's especially exciting to be here because Freeze London celebrates its 20th anniversary. I can't wait to see what's in store. Let's go in. I'm starting at the Contemporary Fair, which is Freeze London. The fair brings together over 160 galleries from 46 countries. The aisles are packed. Even in the post-Brexit economy, Freeze London still attracts a big international art crowd and I'm guessing some Victorian locals too. Lately, I've been seeing Yinka Shonibari's works everywhere. Currently, there is a big exhibition titled Free the Wind, the Spirit and the Sun at the Stephen Friedman Gallery on Cork Street in Mayfair. I'm Charlotte at Christair Roberts Gallery at Freeze London. And this is the gallery that specializes in limited editions. And we are showing um, these new works by Yinka Shonibari, these works on paper. Um, they are a combination of wood block and batik fabric collage. They're titled Modern Spiritual. So you've got these elements of the print are um, our fabric and Yinka uses this in his works on paper and his sculptures. He's interested in the, um, the origin of, the, of this material, which originated from Indonesia, was mass produced in Europe, in Holland, and then sold to African colonies. And um, Yinka is interested in African masks and artifacts that were collected by modernist artists at the turn of the 20th century. So his work is about um, national identity and what that means in um, uh, a colonial or post-colonial context. One of the additions this year is the Artist to Artist Initiative, where a major artist invites a lesser known talent. Here is one of them. Alexander Levy from Berlin. The gallery has the same name that I have. Um, the gallery is from Berlin and exists since 12 years now. And we're very happy to be here invited for freeze for the artists and artists section. A um, section where eight artists have been invited from already as highly established artists, I would say. And in our case, Fabian Knecht have been invited by Olaf Eliasson. We work since eight years together with Fabian Knecht, an artist based in Germany. This presentation is very special for him and us because he stopped doing art more or less for a while two years ago when the war between Russia and Ukraine started. He joined the uh, uh, Ukrainian resistance, but as an artist at some point he had to get back to, to his kind of procedure or kind of deal with what he kind of has seen there and perceived. So he decided to kind of create artworks that are kind of communicating what is going on there and also to help through these works. What we see behind me in the booth are three different works, which are actually original camouflage nets from Ukraine. Um, it's very special. Everybody go, comes together there and every clothes they can kind of uh, spend for these nets are getting cut, they're getting prepared together in huge halls, a very community uh, kind of action. They look on first sight very beautiful because they're made out of everyday life clothes and like when Fabian kind of creates this more like artificial sculptural experience here at an art fair, then you don't really know what you see in front of you. So you have to go one step closer, you have to ask questions. But it's also an experiment he sometimes does with the white cube. What is the white cube doing to things that change the perception? And this is not just a ready-made for him, it's more like a social sculpture because one third of the uh, selling price goes back to the Ukraine, so it's also based a little bit on the idea of boys that you have an artwork that goes back to its origin after some point. So you can find all the infos about the projects on our website and on Fabian's website. There you can also find information about the HELP organization. Thanks very much for asking me. 
I'm especially happy to see this gallery from New York here at Freeze. So we've had the privilege to have Alvaro Barrington choose Simonette Kwamina. Simonette is an Afro-Caribbean artist based between New York and Massachusetts, and uh, we represent her at Praxis. Uh, I'm at the gallery a couple of years ago. So Praxis started in 77, first in Buenos Aires, and 10 years later, in 87, we started here. We have always focused on Latin American art, especially the location in New York focuses on Latin American, Latinx, that's where our heart is. We've had a spectacular <laughs> opening night. Uh, today is day number five, that's why we look a bit exhausted. But uh, the reception of Simonette's work here in London has been overwhelming, has been fantastic. We've seen the audience be very welcoming and open to uh, discovering new talent. Um, we also want to thank particularly Freeze because they've shown a specific interest in this section of artist to artist and throughout the five days they brought countless of times curators, collectors, museums. So uh, it's very much appreciated to see how a big fair with massive booths, with mega galleries have have shown so much interest in us, kind of the underdogs. Um, we are going home with empty hands, full hearts. Uh, we feel this has been a career shifting moment in Simonette's, um, in Simonette's life. Her whole practice, we believe, is gonna uh, just take a whole other level after having the opportunity to be exhibited at such a mainstream arena. Now here's a blitz overview of the stands. Pilar Porius, Sophie von Hellerman, Lindsay Mendick's installation of ceramic handbags at Carl Friedman, Gallery Lilong, multiple artists, and partially obscured energy hat by Marina Abramovich, a video sculpture by Indian artist Ranbir Kaleka at Vedera. This is David Zwerner, Rose Wiley, and the smaller version of Josh Smith's Grim Ripper, Little Friend. The bigger version is at three sculptures. To one a gallery, I have a video with this gallery during Freeze New York. Goodman Gallery, Yinka Shunibari, William Kentridge, Alan Atsui, Esther Shipper. This is Pace. House and Worth, Barbara Chase Ribu, White Cube, Marguerite Hamu, Georg Baslitz, Tracy Emin, Josh Klein, who recently had a retrospective at the Whitney at 47 Canal, Sarah Lucas, Contemporary Fine Arts, solo booth of German artist Martin Eder at Eigen and Art, South Korean gallery Kukje. Misha Khan's Caterpillar, the breeder. And here's one of my favorite sections, focus for galleries under 12 years. Carrot Chin at Vitrine. Lithuanian artist Maria Osalskaita at PM8 Gallery. British artist James Lewis, presented by Mir Altman. It's time to head out to see Freeze Masters. To get to Freeze Masters is about 15 minute walk through the English Gardens of the Regents Park. It's especially gorgeous in the fall. And that's home to Freeze Sculpture, a free section of the fair open to the public through the end of October. Cacti sculptures by Indian artist Suhasini Kejival. Yinka Shunibari again, presented by Stephen Friedman Gallery. English artist Amy Stevens, Waking Matter. Argentine artist Tomas Saraceno, Silent Autumn. And in the background, a living sculpture by Gada Amer, My Body, My Choice. This is the tallest sculpture in the garden, called the Mothership Connection by Zach Hove. The totem-looking structure is adorned with tribal African and Haitian masks. 
The base references the Mad Mask Jenny in Mali. And at the top, a ceremonial helmet mask worn by women of Sierra Leone. Right next to it, Temitayo Bumbi's You Will Carry Dreams, Memories, and New Beginnings, 48 Days. And a giant Afro pig by Hank Willis Thomas. The walk wasn't too bad, just about 15 minutes, and finally we are at Freeze Masters. It's always a treat. Over 130 galleries present works ranging from antiquities to the 20th century. Gagosian has a solo booth presentation of works on paper by Austrian artist Franz West. Here is a striking portrait by Lucian Freud at Simon Dickinson and blue chip modern artist at Helena Mad. You can even buy a skeleton of baby T-Rex. The elegant atmosphere and a treasure trove of historical masterpieces attract visitors like Julia Dennis of London Art Portfolio. One of my highlights is coming to the Freeze Masters which I really enjoy and I kind of save myself to build up for that once I've seen the contemporary post-2000 work. I come here every year. I usually visit it at least three times in the week and my daughter Carlotta Dennis Lavalio is very much involved with the organisation of the Freeze Art Fair too. And coming to the Freeze Masters, it's just fantastic because you see the ancient art and, and it makes you put things into perspective as to where are we now and how amazing ancient cultures were with a great perspective and a sensibility for aesthetics. Equally, part of the Freeze Art Fair, which I think is particularly wonderful, is that it includes the 19th century modernist painters. But what caught my eye is the name of Boris Vasilievich Unrep at the Philip Mould Gallery. Here's Alice Smith. We're based here in London on Pall Mall and we deal with 500 years of British art, so anything from the Tudor period up until around the 1950s, 1970s. We have our Bloomsbury wall here at the back where we're showcasing artists such as Duncan Grant, Vanessa Bell, Simon Bussey and behind you Rayburn, Sir Godfrey Neller and a beautiful intimate portrait of two young girls. And I'm standing in front of an incredibly rare work of art by the mosaic artist Boris Anrep who produced the mosaics in the National Gallery, in Tate, in the Bank of England, the list goes on. It's come from a private collection. It was bought by the portrait artist Augustus John in 1913, who later commissioned an enormous overmantle by the artist in his home in Chelsea. It was Supposedly, the figure depicted in the mosaic is Václav Nizhinsky. So it's right at the beginning of modernism here in Britain. You get a sense of the collision between post-impressionism and Byzantine mosaic here in the sculpture and we are incredibly lucky to have it here at Freeze. There is also more contemporary art presented here. Ai Weiwei at Galleria Continua, a three-piece photographic work dropping a Han Dynasty urn from 1995. Castelli Gallery from New York presents Richard Pettibone's works. At first glance, they look like Warhol, Duchamp, but they're replicas. It's what it's called appropriation art. Works by Mara Hatoum at White Cube. This is a new section at Freeze Masters called Modern Women. It features forgotten women artists from 1880 to 1980. Arario Gallery from South Korea is showing Yoon Kanye. It's another gallery in the section, Gallery Bernard Bush. In the booth, I wanted to exhibit mainly self-portrait. Bernard Bush, the owner of his eponymous gallery in Paris, presents the works of Emily Charmy, French modernist painter and his grandmother. I start self-portrait from a work from 1906, this one. It's an interesting work because all these very contemporary approach of that period 
and then we mix different periods. That one is from 1942, this one 1910, she was quite old at this time, it's 1965, and I like very much this one from 1940, it was painted during the war. And this one is an exception. It's not a self-portrait. This is Colette. Colette was a very famous French writer. Sidonie Gabrielle Colette was a very interesting figure in the French literature of the 20th century. Her novels explored love and sexuality. Her first books were published under her then-husband's pen name. By the end of her life, she was a celebrated French belletrist, and a couple of her books even were turned into Hollywood movies. The last one, a self-portrait from 1921, very well-known work, often exhibited in America, in a museum, in France, and voilà. After a little snack, it's time to go back. And that's a wrap. From London, I'm Jane Greaves. Stay inspired and I'll see you next time.